Welcome to God's Business, where in today's episode, we're going to talk about why men succeed and lose it all over and over again their entire life until they die not far from where they started. And obviously how you can be a man or woman that goes out there and actually goes and succeeds beyond anything they've ever done before. Uh, first point is that there's something called the law of the watermark. The watermark is inside of fitness, inside of relationships, inside of success and money. There's this place where we feel super comfortable and generally inside of our brain, the brain is created to keep us safe, not to push us outside of our comfort zone. Like the brain is not there to be like, try something new, do something risky. It's supposed to keep you from dying. Oftentimes brains will keep people from dying. The worst thing is when it gets to the point where it actually keeps people from living. There's a quote out there that says that people, man may live to 75, but often they die at 25, just buried at 75. And this happens so often and, and it's so true. And so one of the things is how do we break through that watermark where there's this place where maybe it's the money that you make. They've done studies where if people make all the money that they normally would make in a month in three days, they'll usually sabotage the rest of the month. If they've messed up the entire month and there's three days left till the end of the month to make the money that they need to pay their bills, they'll all of a sudden make it in three days. What does this tell me? They can make the money that they normally make in three days. Yet for some reason, they keep every time they get above that watermark, their brain will always tell them to go back down into what's comfortable and what they've always known. And this could be a place where they just put a cap and a lid on their life. So how do we keep blowing off that lid? The same thing happens in their fitness. It happens in their relationships. And even more so, after we have these issues and allow these watermarks to pull us back, we have an increased chance of it happening the next time. Meaning that let's say you get divorced, unless there's a shift in your life, there's actually a 15% higher chance that you'll get divorced again. And 90% of people that get divorced once get remarried another time. So 90% of those people will get married another time with a 15% higher chance of getting divorced again. And that includes the people that have worked on themselves. Like that's just a across the, the board standard. There's two fears in every man's life. Number one is you're not going to make it. Not going to make it. You have all these dreams and there's this fear. I'm never going to make it. Like there's just this weird thing. You're grinding and you get hit in the face with things. And it's just like, I'm not going to make it to where I want to be. And that could be inside of marriage. It could be inside of, inside of your health. It could be inside of your business success. But there's this fear inherently that's just kind of stuck inside of men is that we're never going to amount up to, to what we dreamed of. The one that I'm going to talk about here today, though, is actually the second biggest fear, which is that once I make it, I'm going to lose it all. And it's this big self-fulfilling prophecy that if we make it, all of a sudden now we're like, we have, we have to uh, almost stay to this standard. I remember one of my mentors, he's a retired Navy SEAL, and he talked about that uh, always, everyone who works out with a Navy SEAL always wants to beat a Navy SEAL. So though you become a Navy SEAL, which would be an earned identity, it's a lot of pressure to keep that identity because afterwards, everyone wants to measure themselves up to a Navy SEAL. But if you fall behind, you now have fallen back from where you've been before. And, and th this is also with lottery winners. People that win the lottery oftentimes are worse off than before they won it, wishing they never had the money in the first place because they end up going broke in five years while they received a result that was much higher than they'd ever had before. Way above their watermark makes them so uncomfortable. And then they dwindle down, meaning they're always going backwards rather than forward. They're not steadily progressing 1% a day from where they were. They massively go outside of their comfort zone to a place they've never been before that challenges their identity. And then they end up reducing, having their identity reduce that wealth all the way back to where they were. But now they feel like they've gone backwards, even though they may be further ahead than what they were before. Another way to put this is that if you put a king from a kingdom or a billionaire from a company into poverty, he will always build a kingdom again because he is a king internally, not just externally. You could also take someone in poverty and put them in the position of a king. And if they do not have the identity of a king and the skill sets of that, they will end up just reducing the entire kingdom back into poverty. And, and oftentimes that's from this place, again, of one, the watermark, and two, the second biggest fear is that I'm going to lose it all. It can become a self-fulfilling prophecy, yet also at the same time, it's something that most men are working against all the time. So I wrote down a few different things of inside of my life and inside of a lot of the guys that we've worked with. What are some of the core things that they go through that makes them that that makes men that succeed lose it all? And the first one is they work so hard in the business that they neglect the relationship. And 
one of the big things about this is it, I talk about relationship because inside of the family relationship, there's no such thing as success with failure in the home. Yet this can work in so many different areas of life. It, it comes in a boundary where we end up looking and putting so much emphasis on work and success and money that we end up not getting any type of fulfillment from anything besides success, progress, and money in the business sense. And so the boundary of every other area of our life goes down and allows the business to bleed into every other area of it. And every bit of progress from any other area of our life amounts to nothing because whatever you put an emphasis on with your brain, whatever you choose to value is what your body's going to get satisfaction from. So when it comes to health, let's say, it's very easy to only get satisfaction from losing weight. And so we don't look at the minor things that help us lose weight as a positive thing. Like if we drink water, we're like, okay, I hit my water goal, but who cares? I don't care about that. I care about losing weight. And what ends up happening is that we never lose the weight because we never get these micro satisfactions through celebrating these small tracks forward. So if we were to say, I want to hit my water every single day, I want to eat these foods, we could celebrate those things every single day and they end up turning into the result that we want. So one of the things that men will do, and I remember this happening to me, I, I was in California, I was working out in the gym. I'm in the gym trying to get my workout at the end of the day because I procrastinated all day because all I cared about was selling tickets to our events and getting people there. I kind of fallen back into this trap again of if I make more money, everything will be better. I'll be happier if I just succeed more. I go to the gym, I'm answering questions on my phone the entire time because I'm allowing that boundary to go down and, and end up bleeding into my time of working out. So now I'm five minutes in between a set, I'm getting a terrible workout. So now I'm upset because I'm neglecting myself. I, I'm not putting myself uh, as a priority. And, and I'm sitting there going, oh my goodness, I've allowed again, every single thing inside the business to overcome every single thing that I want in my life. And I'm getting no satisfaction. My workout isn't bringing me satisfaction because it's not growing the business. Spending time with my wife isn't bringing satisfaction because it's not growing the business. My future son, because it's not growing the business. Friendships, because it's not growing. The, we get so one track mind that all we have is we need to hit this goal. And again, it's so short lived. You end up hitting the goal. And it's like, we need to set another one. And so not only do we not get satisfaction out of the journey of hitting the goal, which is step number one, two is we don't place value on other areas of our life. And so what ends up happening is everything that we actually care about ends up crumbling right underneath us. And, and that can end up in broken relationships. And I've seen this happen even inside of my family. I, my dad broke up with my mom when, when I was four. And then even outside of that, in, in the midst of business struggle and personal struggle and just putting emphasis on those other areas, my dad ended up getting divorced again. And none of those things, like if you want, if you want the fastest way to lose half your net, net worth, it would be through getting a divorce, right? That's the fastest way to lose half your net worth. Yet it's also the psychological and emotional side of it, of that tearing of one spirit that ends up just breaking down and you realize why was I working all together the entire time? So one of the first ones is they work so hard in the business that they neglect the relationship. They put too much emphasis on the business over other areas. So number one, put an emphasis on the end result that you want in the business, create satisfaction by doing the tasks to get there, putting emphasis on the other four dimensions in faith, relationships, and health. And that way that we can have micro things that all bring this satisfaction of life so that we can get satisfaction, bring momentum into the business, yet also not neglect all the things that we actually care about for this temporary thing of, of this addiction of if I just become more successful, I will be happier. So number two is operating in seclusion. There's actually two different types of seclusion. That's an absolute killer. If you actually look at the Bible, you can ask yourself, what is the number one or first problem ever mentioned in the Bible? First problem, right? It's like, God created this and it was good and he created this and it was good and he created man. And it was very good. And, and there's all these things that are really good. And then there's the first problem that comes up in the Bible. And that first problem is it's not good for man to be alone. And there's a guy named Daniel Grothy that has a phenomenal book on this as well as a message that he speaks. And it just hit me so hard is man was alone. And the first problem ever described in the Bible was that it's not good for man to be alone. And I found, and I broke down two different ways to know if you're going to seclusion and there's two very dramatic sides of this pillar. Uh, the first man is they, they only want community if everything's perfect. So this is like the guy, this is typically kind of where I, I come in sometimes is, is I'll struggle with this is I want to be perfect, right? I want to, I want to have the great business, the great marriage, the great health. And I want to have everything kind of figured out on my own. 
so that when I get into community, I'm not taking away from anyone else. I could just be a contributor. And the problem with this is like that day may never come. And, and that's one of the hardest ones is when I, when I look at this style, it's like, let me use all my willpower, everything that I've got on my own to try to do everything on my own, which biblically is never supposed to be the way that it's supposed to be done. You'll never see it throughout scripture, people doing anything on their own. You'll, you'll, you'll even see the first problem is not good for man to be alone. But in America, individualism is such a powerful thing that we've placed so much emphasis on inside of, I want to be individualistic. I want to do everything on my own. I don't want to depend on anyone. Uh, one of the biggest convicting things for me over this last year was that success is not not needing anything from anyone. I thought success was basically, I just don't need anything from anyone. I could just help them. And I saw this happen even for my father. And and, and I'm sure like one of the hardest things, again, for my father is like, he didn't have a podcast, tons of mentors, tons of great business leaders. And so when I look at it, I'm not looking at it from, oh my goodness, I can't believe he made that mistake. I'm looking at it from, I could totally see how he made that mistake. Now, how can we not make the mistake because we have shows like this and God's business and mentors. And I bring in 26 uh, experts every year inside of my community. I bring more than that here inside of God's business. So how can we not make those same mistakes when we actually do have the resources? But what ended up happening is my dad ended up going through bankruptcy. I think it was around 2009. And I, I really saw that he didn't have great community, but I saw he worked really, really hard for things to rebound. And, and it kind of felt like if he if he had everything rebound and everything was better, then he would easily go out back out in the community. But when you're in this like stressful state of like, I need everything to be good. I need to make sure my business is good. Like I'm so stressed. I have so much stuff going on. That's great. But the problem is, what if that never comes? What if the day never comes that everything's fine? And you end up, you catch yourself at 60, 70 years old and you still have no community and made no progress forward. That's why I said, oftentimes men will end up losing the success that they've created and ending life not very far from where they started it. Like, may they may even look back and go, wow, my life was better when I was younger than it is right now. And that is not a life to be living. That's a life that died at 25, but is buried at 75. So number one is inside that place of, of I only need community and, and I, want, I only want to get it when things are good. And again, you use all the willpower in your life to get to a place where you think everything's good. So then you join a community. Maybe you join a mastermind or a friend group or a new church. You start hanging out with people. And then what ends up happening? We correlate this inside of our mind that the second that something goes wrong, we blame it on the community. That's the only variable change, right? So we, we end up joining a community. We hang out with friends a little bit more. We get inside of that community. It feels good. And then all of a sudden something breaks in the business. Something doesn't go right. Something kind of gives and we go, oh my goodness. I knew it. It's because I joined this community. I need to pull back and go and do it all on my own and try to figure it out. So it's kind of this place that one, the day may never come. And if the day does come, then we just correlate the next problem with we need to leave community, not knowing that it's actually leaving us completely burnt out, visionless, and not a, a, a enabling us to be able to reach our potential just as we would biblically see. The second type of person that goes into seclusion is someone that I, I kind of described as the person that is on the Titanic, the Titanic sinking, right when the Titanic buckles up and goes underwater and you get sucked underwater, then they start blowing the whistle for help. And there's no one in the ocean. And by the time anyone comes to help, it's already too late. And I see this happen so often. There's guys that will reach out to us and be like, oh my goodness, like I need help right now. Everything in my life's going under. And they reach out when things are terrible, like in the worst state ever. And you notice that these people, as soon as they get back to stability, the, the four S's of survival, stability, success, and significance. They'll never make it to success or significance because they only reach out to community when they're in this place of complete, just they're just in this, the worst place ever, right? This Titanic sunk. It's impossible. They're in this big scarcity and, and, and they go from that, that scarcity moment and they get back to stability. And then all of a sudden they give up on everything. Like they don't need the community anymore because now the pressure's off. Right. But also they blame the community. They go, ah, oh, I knew it. They couldn't help me. And the reason they couldn't help is because they never asked for help until the Titanic already sank and it was already on fire and there was no way to actually recover it. All there was is an ability to build up from there. And as soon as they get back to regular life, then they just end up leaving community and they end up just repeating the same mistake over and over again. So just knowing that and biblically, we see that like a multitude of counselors is very healthy. I talk a lot about how Solomon had wise counsel around him, even though he's the wisest man in the world. 
and he passed it down to his son who didn't use the wise counsel, but it was so valuable that he passed it down to his son, even though he's the most wise person in the world. And so when I look at that, I look at it, one, it's not good for man to be alone, but two, it's that counsel around you that can help out. And so it's kind of like putting bumper weights on, or bumper weights, like the bumpers on the, when you go out there and you go bowling, it's like, how do I not do both of these? How do I maintain and stay in community when things are not going well and I can lean on the community? And I maintain community when things are going very well, where I don't just go, I don't need anyone. Like I'm good now. And I'm just a taker from the community. So like, I don't want to just be a giver. I don't want to just be a taker. And I want to find a place where I can consistently be inside of community because I, I, it's a thing that I consistently see. It's like guys leaving community and inside of that loneliness, they end up doing a lot of things they shouldn't do. And, and this is where they also fall into sin. And I, I see this over and over again. Uh, the third one is inside of the business they build, they hate it. So they burn it down. It's like they make these terrible decisions when things are hard and they create their demise. Like it, it's very interesting to see is they make good decisions. You want to make good decisions when you're in state so that when you're out of state, you don't change them. And so these two things kind of work together is that they build a business that will never get them the life that they want. And so they constantly are always thinking about the thing that they want to do. But because they're building a business that is what's in front of them, what they've always known, what they see as the path of success, as soon as it gets them to a place of breathing room, they end up kind of looking at it as like grass is greener on the other side. And there's some nuances to this. Yet I see this all the time. And one of the hardest ones that I see is that they don't like the business they're building. So as soon as they make the money and they get breathing room to dream again, they start dreaming about every single thing else that they could do. And the hardest thing is, is that when hard things come in their business, what they end up doing is instead of staying committed to the path in front of them, like one of two options, commit to something else or stay committed to the path in front of you. What they end up doing is that as soon as something bad happens, they start making decisions that take them out of things that are making them successful and into things that go back to comfort. And so this could be a thing where, you know, they, they make a decision to, let's say, commit to working out. Let's just say that they commit to working out. And they feel amazing. They're going to the gym, but things get hard. So they're like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm canceling my gym membership. Money's too tight. And it's like the whole point was that when you're in a powerful state, you make a decision to go to the gym so that when you feel like a baby again and you want to cry and bad things are happening, now all of a sudden you can lean back on your powerful self and be like, no, I'm going to continue to go to the gym because when I was powerful, I made this decision. I'm not going to drive decisions when I'm in a low state. And too often men are making decisions that change their life forever in a state that's not powerful. That's the worst place to make a decision. I would say that powerful men make decisions in powerful moments and they remember what they were like in powerful moments and what their powerful self makes decisions like. And they make decisions very slowly, if ever, when they're not in a powerful state. Just simple as that. They allow that decision to trump any types of feelings that they have in that current moment. Next one is not growing in faith, so they get caught up in sin, which is so easy to do when you're in a business world. It's very easy to do. You know, if you're just in in a church environment, it's pretty easy to have great accountability. If you're in your word all the time, if you're praying all the time, this is a place where you can feel really just kind of dusted off, like just pure, just cleansed. And so because of that, different things in the world don't seem to catch your attention. Yet the tough part is, is that when we're consistently learning from business leaders, because all of us here, we're here to build businesses. Like, and a lot of times this is the place where it's kind of like our, the place we apply ourselves, right? We're not trying to be a fitness athlete. We're not trying to, you know, be the, the relationship guru, unless that's your business. It's like, we want to have a great marriage. We want to be healthy. We want to be a great father. Yet the place that we're like sharpening our expertise all the time and the place that we've been called to put our time to be an expert and be number one at is inside of our businesses. And that could be different deliverables. Yet every business runs on even to produce a profit, lead generation, lead nurture, conversion, deliverable, retention, resell, upsell. Right? Like these are required, right? To do well. And then obviously to save money, we want tax and accounting and finance and, and things that are super important as well, but we need to produce money to be able to do that. And so inside of, Inside of this place is very easy to learn from business leaders out there that are not healthy for us to model. And so because of that, one, if you don't have faith, it's very easy, right? You go out there, you start learning from business leaders. A lot of business leaders live in this crazy debauchery. Like, <laughs> I mean, you, you, you can look at 
everything from Jeffrey Epstein, which hopefully doesn't ruin this entire video and, and ruin the reach of it. You can look at everything from Jeffrey Epstein, rich, powerful business person, and all the people he's connected to, to different presidents and problems. You can look at different business leaders and you don't have to look very far to see people that are completely twisted, that have access to a ton of capital and resources to do whatever the heck they want. And that's the tough part is that there's a lot of people out there that have no resources that are twisted. But there's also a lot of people out there that have resources that are twisted and that's even more scary. And so when you submit yourself to people to learn how to make money, but then they're living in a life of sin or what would be considered sin to you, if that's what you care about is you want to live a godly lifestyle, some things are caught, not just taught. And so in this place of some things are caught, it's easy to put some of that stuff on and end up falling into over drinking relationships and, and emotional relationships and affairs with other women. It's easy to get sucked into quick money or not doing business correctly and, and that isn't pleasing to God rather than in a fair manner or in, in a way that's pleasing to God. It's very easy to get caught up in these things into pornography, into uh, kind of like lust of the flesh where you're just desiring things that are not eternal, right? It's like things that are eternal and last forever, the things that God cares about and and those things are represented through the things that we do every single day, like in the multiplication of money. Yeah, at the end of the day, there's no scoreboard in heaven of how how much money you have. It, it ain't going to matter. So when we start just desiring all these different things, we end up just looking from a, heav from a heavenly lens instead of into an earthly lens that ends up giving us no satisfaction and easily opens us up to sin. And I see that sin just easily entrap men all the time where they just get stuck in this place. It's like, First comes pride, then comes shame. And so inside of pride and disconnection from God, then there's there's acts that produce shame. And, and it's tough for a man to perform when he's operating against what he knows his spirit should do, knowing that you're a soul that has a spirit that lives in a body. The body will pass away. The spirit's connected to God. I want to live in the spirit and not in the soul. And I definitely don't want to make everything in my life only about the body. And, and it's just easy to do that. This is why when I was coming up, like, learning business, I just consistently always desired to go deeper and deeper down where are people that believe faith is more important than me than anything else. So where's that? Yet it's, if I couldn't find business or help in that area, I'd go learn from whoever it took. And so I just consistently was looking for more and more people that were more aligned in the areas outside of business that had no compromise in that area. So I first started out with just learning from anyone and I just saw it rub off on me. And then I, I found a Christian mentor and the Christian mentor wasn't perfect, but it still like was that next step. And I've just consistently kind of pushed towards that way of even my friendships. Friendships were like anyone and then, but they were in business. So I could learn from and, and be sharpened by. And then it was like, okay, well, these people are conservative and build a business. And it's like, oh, wow, these guys are faith driven, believe in miracles and we're building businesses. And so the deeper amount that I could go on that, the more longevity there was. So I wasn't having it where my business was taking away me away from the thing that I care about most, which is faith. And if, if my business is taking me away from faith, then I'm going to resent my business. And if faith is taking me away from business, then I'm going to resent faith because I know I'm called to the business, but I don't know how to build it. And it takes that, that skill set of God using people to work together, right? Like God didn't even name the animals. He told Adam, go name the animals. And so there's this place of like co-laboring where there's, it's our decision to go out there and do it. Um, Getting caught up in the grass is greener, leaving them inconsistent, producing little results, and deviating from the path that created the results. This happens so often. Uh, when you look at grass is greener, I, I see so many men consistently looking at they're in real estate and they want to they want to do this other thing, and and they're in this industry and they want to do this this other thing over here. And uh, I had this happen even with a family member of mine. They had gone through many different business decisions, and they finally landed on something that they absolutely loved. And and even a model that worked, they ended up running this, this play that they had their first six figure month. So just think about online, they produce a hundred thousand dollars in a month. So a lot of it was from courses. And then some of those courses upsold into a retreat that they were having. So they hit this six figure month and the next time they tried it, it didn't work as well. And it freaked them out. And, and it kind of launched them in this, to this new area where they just didn't feel comfortable. Right. They, they, they created this result and they're like, I don't know if we like doing it this way. And so they look at all these other different ways to do it. And instead of doubling down on the things that produce their best revenue, they end up switching to something completely different. And it's kind of like one of the choose your hearts. Like 
do you want to go through the hardness of you build a business and you have to sustain it and continue it? Or do you want to go through the hard of going and recreating something that you already did over and over again? So when I talk about grass is greener, leaving inconsistent, uh, leaving them inconsistent, producing little results. It's like when you consistently switch from one thing to the next, it's like starting a whole over and over again or, or building on a new lot of land over and over and over again, where if you just stayed consistent in that one area, you will produce results. If there is a market cap and so often they jump from one side to the other, and I've caught myself do it so much. It's like when I was spread thin, even though in my first $100,000 year, I was carpet cleaning, health coaching, remodeling homes, and selling things on Craigslist and offer up in Facebook Marketplace. I was spread so thin, but I did that to kind of see like, what, what am I good at? What's the opportunities in front of me? And then it was like producing millions of dollars was from then taking the thing that was the best out of all those things that had the most potential and just focusing on that for years. Like that, that was how it was done. It's like, how do I keep focusing down on what works? Right. I, I remember when we launched our first events, we did 200 and something thousand dollars in our, our first event in the first like week. And so it was like, okay, should I now go look for a new opportunity of all the different ways that I should do this or start a brand new business or talk about how hard it was to run an event, or maybe I should just run events. And so for five years straight, I just ran events and I just kept doing that same thing. And, and it's not that you can't switch. It's just that what hard do you want to choose? And so often I see guys that have breakthrough in their business, in a, in a acquisition method or delivery method in their business or a product in their business. And so instead of doubling down on the product, they just go out there and they create a new product or they create a brand new business and it leaves them always producing little results and they're deviating from the path that created the results. So the, this, uh, this is also looked at as like, how do you create your best month ever? I remember doing this with Brandon Poole and for our company is he looked at one avenue of revenue that we created and he's like, all right, what, what created the most amount of revenue in the least amount of time? And we went through it and it was very easy to see this created the most amount of revenue in the least amount of time. And it was like, all right, well, if, if we want to do this every month, have our best month every month as a starting place to grow the business, well, why don't we just deconstruct exactly what we did to produce the best month and do that again, and but put more focus on it so that we could do it even better. So one thing to think about is like, let's stop looking at grass as green on the other side for different business models. And there are times where there's better opportunity, I promise. If you're in a business that someone else is succeeding in right now in a different industry or same industry, same market, different market, if there's someone there that's succeeding, you can succeed. And on top of that, what about the products and the acquisition method that you're using to sell those products? Is it working? Or are we looking for just another way to do it instead of just doing the exact same way that works? Um, the next one is they sacrifice their family and health on the altar of success, always having to sacrifice what they care about for success, making it a conflict. We had talked about that. If the business that you're running sacrifices your health and your family, your relationship, your kids, your calling, your faith, it will always be a split between if I want to be successful, I have to sacrifice what I care most. Or if I do what I care about most, it's always going to put me into a place where I have to sacrifice all of it again and keep going through this repetitive cycle where you're never able to build. It's always build and then burn fit and then fat great relationship divorce or great relationship bad relationship always consistently going back and forth rather than this dance that the family does where it's it's one unit consistently moving in seasons and consistently pushing all together to create something bigger where all the materials are being used for one flavor from full meal rather than conflicting flavors all the time and so inside the place of they sacrifice family and health it's like i had talked about many times throughout my my own journey where I had the reason we created even the four-dimensional business man was because I would lose weight, got married, had no income, was a Christian, had my faith, and was just like, why is there this area that I can't get rid of of my life that I'm not succeeding in? And I'd go focus on the business and then all of a sudden I'd get out of shape. Or I'd focus on the business and I hadn't read my Bible in like a year. I, oh, I'm praying and doing all these things, but am I putting God first? Am I acknowledging in what in everything that I'm doing? Can I really, can I really expect to have the fruits of what He says I can have in my life if I'm not submitting myself to the process of exactly what He says? And so inside that place, I'm always consistently thinking about 
Like I, I consistently see guys sacrifice their family and their health on the altar of success to create the success and, and end up losing everything. When I even talk about businessmen with people out there in the world to describe a businessman by old definition, be like clothes that don't fit, they smell like cigars, they stink, they, they are consistently drinking alcohol late nights, never there with their family, consistently putting their their body and their their image last. Image meaning like, who are you and what do you represent? And that's always coming last and sacrifice on the altar of late nights grinding at the office when it doesn't have to be that way. And ultimately, like that's why we created looking at all these things and, and even recapping them. One, we talked about the watermark. In every man's life, there's a watermark right now. What is your watermark in your health, in your relationships, in your fitness? What do you know? What money have you been told you can make? Right. If you were if I were to tell you, do people give you random money all the time or does money come to you easily and frequently? If you can't say yes to those, it's time to start thinking about, okay, how do I switch this? If I were to say, hey, if someone offered to pay you $250 million for a contract to do to to hire you, would that feel comfortable? If the answer is no, then there's a problem of watermark. End of story. End of story. If you've been stuck in a place where you're consistently making the same amount of revenue in your business or same amount of income no matter what things you shift up or it goes up and then it drops all the way back down. You go keep going back into survival mode. We talked about there's survival, there's stability. Stability is sometimes the worst because stability is where things are just not bad. So because of that, if you're motivated by things being bad, we'll never jump to success because we'll always live in this, well, it's just not that bad. You know, I don't, I don't make enough money or live a lifestyle that I can impact others or even give my family what I want, but things are just not that bad. When you go back into survival mode, sometimes that's where we make the jump to success, which is we don't even have enough for ourselves. We, have, we don't have enough for others. We don't have enough for ourselves. When we jump to success, success is where the things that we're doing are producing results. We have more than enough for ourselves, but the business that we're running and the money that we have are not making an impact in the kingdom, God's will on the earth, or other people's lives. That's success. Like You're still successful. You've made it way past anything that you need for yourself. And we want to graduate to this place called significance, where not only the business that we run is making an impact, the money that we're making, the life that we're living, the message that we have is making an impact on other people as well. And that's really when we step into this place of significance. And that's why we created King's Brotherhood. And one of the announcements I want to make here is that if any of these identify with anything that you've gone through of the two fears in a men's life, not going to make it or, or you're going to lose it all, uh, the people working so hard in business that they neglect their relationship, the seclusion, the two different types of, I need to be perfect, or I only come into community at the last minute. They build a business they hate, and they always want to consistently burn it to the ground, making terrible decisions when things are hard, they create their demise, and they make they, they end up making decisions when they're in a not so good state rather than in a powerful state. They're not growing in their faith, so they get caught up in sin because they're consistently surrounded by people that are not sharpening their faith. They get caught in grasses greener, leaving them inconsistent to produce little results, deviating from the path that created results in the first place. They sacrifice their family and health on the altar of success, always having to sacrifice what they care about for success, making each of those things a conflict. Either I'm going to be successful or be healthy and not one or the other. And again, being stuck inside that watermark. And that's really why I created King's Brotherhood. And we actually have a retreat coming up that's specifically for men like this, men that not only have created success, yet they want to walk it out and sustain it where they look back at those two fears and they go, you have no hold on me because I not only know that God's equipped me to become successful, but he's actually given me the grace to sustain it and the community inside of brotherhood where we have the ability to walk out powerfully inside of faith, inside of health, inside of relationships with our family and with our significant other. And inside of our businesses, where we can not only create wealth, we have a process to sustain and keep wealth, and we have a process to invest and grow wealth, and we do that inside of a thing called brotherhood. We have our retreat coming up that's the King's Brotherhood Elite. It's out here in Austin, Texas, October 4th through 6th, and we take applications for it. The majority of our spots, 85% of them are already taken up right now, but if you are a man who wants to grow deeper inside of his faith, that doesn't want to have his the side of his personal life be sacrificed for success, but actually be an enhancer. When things are done correctly, the way that the kingdom of God has been created for us and scripturally based, what ends up happening is that when we succeed more in our personal life, it massively blows up the business. And when we massively blow up the business, it continues to, to push back inside of our personal life. And we're able to move from survival, past stability, 
through success and into significance where the things that we're doing are actually making an impact. And there was just a process to get there. And copying someone else's process is just not going to be the way that you get there. I look at it like golf. It's like, if you look at a pro golfer, they're going to use extra stiff shafts, blade irons, very difficult to hit, but they didn't start there. You definitely don't give that to a junior golfer. You have the junior golfer start with the the junior clubs and work their way up until they get to the point where they can use the same thing. But for, for most people, they're just teaching people, do what I'm doing. Like, no, I can't do what you're doing. You're using blades and I'm a four-year-old. Like, they can't do that. And so inside a business, you want to create a tailored strategy where you leave with a GPS system inside of your business to produce profits and continue to grow. That you leave for a, with a place inside of uh, inside of your life where you have brothers that push you forward and you have that wise counsel around you. And you leave learning from advisors that can speak into your business and give wisdom so that you have a bulletproof opportunity to live it out as a godly businessman. And if that's you, you're called to build a business, yet you also want to sharpen your faith. I want to invite you to apply. There's nothing for sale. There's only an ability to apply. And if accepted, you have the ability to invest. And that's at apply.thekingsbrotherhood.com. Apply.thekingsbrotherhood.com. If you want to put a stamp on this for the rest of your life, be jump into a place where you can be empowered and equipped going forward to ex- succeed further than you ever could have done on your own inside a business without sacrificing what matters most. Because like I said, there's no such thing as success with failure in the home. There's also no such thing as success without multiplying with, with what's in your hand. When God gave, when, or when the owner gave talents to the people, the people that multiplied the talents were faithful over little, so they were made rule over much. The guy who didn't was afraid to invest. He was afraid to lose the money, afraid to invest the money. So because of that, everything that he had was taken from him and given to the others. And he was called wicked and slothful. We're called to do both. If you want to do both with us, as like-minded businessmen, apply.thekingsbrotherhood.com. Fill out the application. If you get accepted, our team will actually jump on a call with you. Make sure that everything's great, kosher, and this is the best thing for you. And that way I can see you in October at the King's Brotherhood Elite Mastermind Retreat. Thank you for listening to God's Business. If this has been a valuable episode for you, what you're going to want to do is we, we actually stream on every podcast platform. So whether you're on Spotify or iTunes, you're going to want to go leave a five-star review or give us an honest review and actually write a note as well. I would love to be able to read that. I love showcasing them and showing them to our team. We also have the video version hosted over on YouTube. If you've made it this far, you're going to want to click the subscribe button and ring the bell. That's absolutely phenomenal. Thank you for that. Also, if you if you have something that you believe men do to sabotage their success, go ahead and leave it in the comments if you think I left anything out. 